Hey guys, welcome back to another video. So in this video, I'll be showing you guys how to create a message select menu drop down, which is really cool. And in order for this to work, we need to have a command handler. So if you don't know what this is, this is called a command handler. And I will link, I will link this video in the description below. And besides that, we also need to have a MongoDB connection. So we need to connect to a database. And lastly, we need to have a permission handler for slash commands. I'll link three of those videos in the description if you haven't set those up already. So here's a quick preview on what we'll be creating today. And if I try to click on the test row, it's going to say test one has been added to you. So you click on myself, you can see that I have the member and test row. And now if I try to remove the row, I can just click on the member row once again, member has been removed from you. Check my roles, member is gone. All right, to start off, we need to create a model. So uh, let me just quickly create a model. If you already have a folder, you can use the existing folder. In this case, I don't have a folder, so I'm just going to create a new folder. And I'm going to create a reaction roles.js. In here, we're going to get mongoose from discord.js. I mean mongoose. Uh, we're going to get create a schema as well new mongoose.schema we're gonna have a guild id just gonna be a string and we're gonna have our roles in here so every guild has their own specific roles and for this structure i'm gonna write out this structure over here so let me just create a comment like this uh, i'm just gonna call this role structure so we don't mess up later when we're creating commands you don't have you don't need to do this it's just for reference and i'm just gonna do role id just going to be a string, uh, a role description, which is also going to be a string. And lastly, we have role emoji, which is also going to be a string. So basically, the roles contains objects that have these uh, properties in it. All right, so this is for the drop down selection menu, uh, the emoji for the drop down selection menu, the description of the option, and then the role ID is to add the role itself. All right, perfect. And then we can just create, we can just export this. Module exports, mongoose.model, model, and then we can name it whatever we want. I'm just call this reaction roles, and then we're gonna pass in schema like this. All right, make sure to save the file and let's just create a command to create the custom row. I mean the custom reaction row. So I'm just going to do it in cache commands and I'm going to create a new folder for it. So I can uh, negate the commands easily. So reaction roles like this. And then we create a command called uh, create or you can do add role if you want. Okay, and here we're going to first import our model that we created earlier. So our model equals require another side or slash models slash reaction roles and then i'm going to require a client and command interaction from discord.js so you get intelligence okay so modular exports and in here obviously we have our name our command name which is going to be add role description of this command we're going to do uh add a custom reaction role and then we're going to add user permissions user permissions because we don't want uh, this command to be used by literally everyone so we want to specify a specific permission do keep in mind that in order to use this property you need to follow my slash command permissions video which you can find in the description below okay so i'm just going to do manage uh, roles for this and then we're going to have options so basically now we want to access, uh, we want to get the ID, we want to get the description and we want to ask the, so basically we want to ask the user for the ID, we want to ask the user for the description and lastly we want to ask the user for the emoji. So we can add this in our options right here. So the first property is going to be name, going to be role, uh, description, role to be assigned, to do whatever you want, type, this is going to be a type of role required okay we obviously need a role so this is going to be true all right next we're going to have a description so this is for the role description uh the, the description of this option is going to be description of this role 
type, which is going to be string, and we can just make this optional. Uh, we can just make it false like this. All right. Lastly, we're going to have our emoji. Once again, we also can make that uh, optional. Let me just quickly uh, write out the option uh, emoji for the row type, which is also going to be a type of string uh, required. It's going to be false. Perfect. Now we can create our function async client interaction, and then we can have our entire sense. Ooh, I messed up. This shouldn't be in here. Let me just move this like this. Okay, should be fine now. All right, so make sure that the run function is outside of the options. And then in here, we can get our IntelliSense. So that's the reason I imported it earlier. Uh, command interaction like this. All right, that should be good. All right, so let's just start off by getting all of the arguments. Uh, first, we're going to get the role. So interaction options dot get role. Then we can pass in our name like this. OK, next, we're going to have our role description. So role description equals to interaction the options dot get string. Then we can pass in our description like this. So we're going to use the same thing. Okay, so if this is undefined or null, we're just going to make it null. Okay, I'm not sure whether it returns undefined or null when the user doesn't specify it. So I'm just going to write uh, if it's undefined or null or if it's false, it's going to be null. All right. Okay, you want to do that as well. And then lastly, we're going to have our role emoji. Just interaction the options. Don't get string. And once again, we're going to copy emoji, put this in here. If there's no emoji, we're just going to make it null. All right, perfect. So that should be it. So now we're going to check if the role position is higher than the role of the bot. So basically what I mean, let me just go to Discord and explain it to you guys. We go to server settings, roles. So basically the bot role only can manage the four roles under it. And it can't manage the role that is equally or higher than itself. All right, so uh, it might seem a little confusing, but Hopefully it makes sense. Okay, so we're going to do that check right now. So if role.position is higher or equal to interaction.guild.me. So basically, this is the client itself. The role is the highest. We want to get the highest role, the position. Okay, and then we're just going to return interaction. Don't follow up. Uh, I can't. Oh, let me just use double quotes. I can't assign a role that is higher or equal to is higher or equal than me. And then next we're going to search for the data. So we can just do constitute data because await our model will find one. We're going to find for the guild ID. So let me just pull this to the side if that's possible. Nah, it's too small. Let me just put it back here. So as you can see here in the schema, we have the guild ID, so we're going to search for the guild ID right now. So guild ID will be interaction guild ID. So uh, we're just going to create a new object, so new role, and then uh, we can use this new role because we're going to. I'm creating this object because we're going to reuse this object several times. So I'm just going to create once, so I can use this variable. So role ID. So this is based, this new role is based on this. So you can have the role ID, role description, and role emoji. So let me just quickly do that. Role ID will be role ID. Role description will be role description. In JavaScript, you can either do this or you can just remove this. And JavaScript will automatically interpret this as role description, colon, role description. It's a shorthand. And then lastly, you can have role emoji, which we can leave it like that because they are both defined above. All right, perfect. And so if there's guild data, so if there's existing data, we can just search for the role. So we, uh, once there's data, once there's data, we're going to search for the role in here. All right, so we can just do that by doing control data equals to guild 
data dot rows dot find x x dot row id is equals to row dot id, right? So we're searching for the row id that matches the row mentioned. And if there is data, if there is role data, we're going to update the data. So role data equals to new row. Else, if there is no, if the if the role is not found, that means that the role wasn't previously wasn't previously saved in the database, and we can just create a new one. So we can just do guild roles, a uh, guild data. The roles equals to dot 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 the spread operator guild data the roles. And then we're going to add the new role in here. And then after that, we want to make sure that we save the data. So we can just do await guild data dot save. All right. So else, if there's no data, we can just do, we can create a new data by doing our model dot create guild ID will be interaction dot guild ID. And then the roles will be new role. All right. Perfect. Yeah, that should be it. And then lastly, you can send a success message to the user. So you can just do interaction or follow up. Uh, created a new role and then we can just pass it in the role name like this. So we know that what role has been created. All right, for the next command, we're going to create a command to remove a role. So let's just quickly do that. Create a new file. I'm just going to call this remove role.js. Okay, we can copy the same thing and then we're just going to change something. Uh, I mistyped remove. Let me just quickly fix that. All right. And then uh, we're going to change the add row to remove row. We're going to change the description as well. Remove a custom reaction row. Okay, we need to keep our permissions. Uh, we can remove the options because we don't need description and emoji for now. We only need the role to identify which role you want to remove. And we're going to change the description to role to be removed. And yeah, okay, I'm, I'm just going to delete the other code like this. Should be fine. So we're basically getting role. And then we also need to get the data. So get const guilt data equals to await our, our model of find. Oh, I forgot find one. Make sure there's one in there. Fix the parentheses. Uh, guild ID will be interaction not guild ID. Perfect. And if there is no data, we're just going to do return interaction to so follow up. Uh, there is no rows inside of this guild. Or we can just change it to server, so it's more uh, Discord user friendly. So this server, right? Okay, so that's if there's no data. So if there is data, we're going to check if the role is existing. We're going to check if the role exists in the roles array. So we can do that by doing, uh, we can, I'm just going to create a variable because we're going to use it multiple times. So const guild roles equals to guild data, the roles. And then we're going to do const find role. So we're finding for the role equals to guild roles dot find x x dot role id equals to role id so we're searching for the role if there is no role if there is no find role that means that the data that means the role that the user want to delete does not exist in the roles array so you can just tell the user that you can do it we can do that by doing return interaction or follow up uh, we can do that role is not added to the reaction roles list. All right, perfect. And then if there is data, we're gonna override the previous data by doing guild data, the roles equals to our filter. So we can just do a const filtered roles like this. Okay, we're gonna call the filter function on guild roles. And we are basically removing the role. So we can do that by doing x.role ID it's not equals to role ID. So it's just a basic filter function. And in here we can just pass in filtered roles. And then lastly, we need to save the data. So we can just do that by doing guild data dot save. 
Okay, so once you're done with all of this, we want to make sure to send a success message. So we're gonna do that by we can do that by doing interaction dot follow up. I'm gonna do removed, and then can pass in the role that name so the user knows which role that they have removed. All right, so let's just test this out first. So if you encounter any errors, it will be easier for you guys to debug it. All right, we can start by creating a role. So we can do that by doing slash add role. Um, I'm just gonna add a member role. You can add a description, uh, the member role, and then we can add a emoji. So the emoji is gonna be a. Let me see what emoji I have. Uh, let me just use the potato emoji. Okay. Okay, as you can see here, it says created a new role member, and we're gonna go to our database, and I refresh. Okay, we can have our roles, and I click on the roles, and get our object. This is our role ID. We're going to get our role description and we're going to get our role emoji, which is working just fine. Now, if I try to remove the role, you can remove the member role. Let's just try this out. Remove the member, go to my database, refresh. Now, as you can see here, there's no more data in the roles array. All right, so now I'm going to create a drop down menu for the reaction role system. So I'm going to create a file called panel. Oops, what am I even doing? Panel, 3S. Oh, let me see if I, I think I can just copy the same. Yeah, I think I can just do that. So let me just copy this and I'll just change some things. So I don't need to rewrite everything. Panel, description will be a uh, reaction role. Panel like this. You wanna keep the permissions. We can remove the options because we don't need the options. Uh, let me see what we need. I think we remove this. Yep, remove this. Uh, and then we can remove the others. Yep, this should be fine. Okay, so we can just get the data. And if there's data, uh, we can do something. All right, perfect. All right, so now I'm gonna define the options. So this is gonna be this is gonna appear in the drop down select menu options. So I'm just going to do it by doing const options equals to yield data dot roles dot map x and we can get the role by doing const role equals to interaction dot guild dot roles dot catch dot get and we're going to get the x dot role id okay so x dot role id once again it's from here the role id okay so once you get the role id uh, we can return an object so in the selection menu we're going to have label, uh, which is going to be role name, and we're going to have value. So this is what we're going to get whenever someone reacts. And this is going to do role ID. Uh, next, we can have our description. Uh, it will be x dot role description. If this is now, if x dot role description, if you recall earlier, if they did not specify a description, it's going to default to null. And if this is null, I'm just going to create a text so we can just do no description. Oops, what am I doing? Description. Okay, and then we can have emoji, which is going to be x.role emoji. Okay, so if the person doesn't specify an emoji, it's just going to show an empty emoji. All right, so now we can create an embed. So I can just call this panel embed new message embed my auto imports doesn't want to work so let me just import this manually embed should be fine yep okay we're gonna set a title okay we only need a title because I don't want to make this so fancy you can customize this yourself you can just do please select a row below and then you can set the color. If you want, I'm just gonna make it and the first color. And then we can define our components now. So we can create our select menu in here. Equals to an array with message action row. We're gonna just import these things above here. Alright, so we're gonna need a uh, message action row. You need a message select menu. That should be it. 
Okay, so I what I did, I just imported a uh, message action row and message select menu. Or I can do that as well. So we're gonna use the message action row, and then we can just do add components. In here, we're gonna add our select menu. So you can do that by doing new select message select menu dot set custom ID. Uh, we're gonna set the custom ID to reaction roles, so we can identify it when we are handling the interaction events. And we can set max value one so the person only can choose a single role at a time when uh, retrieving the role so it doesn't cause any unnecessary problems and lastly we're going to add the options by using the add options function and then we can just pass in options like this all right so i just formatted my code and it should look something like this all right uh, lastly we're going to send the embed and the components by doing interaction or follow up embeds, pass in the panel embed, and then we're going to pass in components like this. Oh, I, apparently I made a typo in here, so make sure to change the L to a S because we're going to use the guild data roles. Oh, one more thing you want to take note is you want to check if there's actually roles in here. So you can just use a uh, guild data question mark dot, this is called optional chaining, and then we can just pass in roles like this. All right, so if I try to run the panel command now, it should work. All right, so please select a row below. We see two rows, first the member row, and next we have the test row. But let's say, but let's say you don't want this to view like this. You don't want to see this slash command thing pop up. You just want to see the bot sending this message over here. To do that, we can just change the follow up to interaction.channel.send. So I'm just going to the slash command once again. All right, so you, once again, if you want to remove this, the slash command thing, you can just do uh, change interaction follow up to interaction channel send, and then in here we can just do interaction follow up send, all right, and then we can just test this out once again. Okay, it's gonna say send. Please select a row below. All right, so you can just delete this message, and you should see something like this. All right. So that you wouldn't see uh, this slash command pop up thing if you don't want to see. All right, next, uh, we're going to talk about how to actually add the role to the user. All right, so uh, you want to go to VS Code and then you want to go to Events, Interaction Creator GS. So here is whenever you click something, it's going to trigger this event. So I'm just going to do it in here. All right, just scroll down, okay, right after the context menu handling, or you can just do it after the slash command handling i'm just going to call this a uh, reaction roles handling and then we're going to check if it's a select menu so you can just do interaction dot is select menu if it's a select menu you can just check if the custom id is correct so if interaction the custom id is equals is not equals to reaction roles you're just going to return okay the reason that i'm checking for reaction roles is because in our panel all right, we set the custom ID to reaction roles. So if it's not reaction roles, it must be something else. All right, so uh, once we check, if it's true, we're just gonna quickly defer the message. I mean, defer the reply and add permal true. And then we can define our role ID. So basically uh, interaction of values uh, returns an array Okay, as you see here, a string array. So we want to get the first value, which is going to be our ID. Next, we're going to get the role. So we can just do that by doing interaction. Guild the roles dot catch dot get uh, role ID. Cons has role to check if the person actually have the role. So interaction the member roles dot catch dot has uh, role ID. Okay, so it just tells us whether the user has the role or not. So if the person has the role, we're gonna remove the role. So you can just do do that by the interaction. The member. The roles. The remove. Uh, role ID. And then we can just do interaction. The follow up. Uh, role name has been removed. 
from you. All right, so we can simplify our code by defining member because we're going to use, uh, we're going to just do member roles because we're writing interaction of member to roles multiple times. We can just do member roles, interaction of member roles like this, and then we can just replace this with member roles. So it's not that messy. Okay, member roles. All right. So if the person does not have the role, we can just add the role. You can do that by doing member roles. Dot add, and then we can pass in the role ID once again. And lastly, we're going to do interaction dot follow up, and then we can pass in the role name. And it has been assigned. Or you can just do added to you. To click on the test role, it's going to say test one has been added to you. So you click on myself, you can see that I have the member and test role. And now, if I try to remove the role, I can just click on the member role once again. Member has been removed from you. Check my roles, member is gone. And then same thing, if I do test role, I click on test role. And then when I check my roles, it is now gone. So yeah, that should be it for today's video. If you need any help or you want to suggest a new video, feel free to join the Discord server. Links will be in the description. If you want to watch more of Discord just tutorials, you see a playlist that you can click on the screen right now. Click on that, there is tons and tons of tutorials waiting for you. Alright, and that, have a nice day. See you in the next video. Bye!